I have two stepsisters and a bio sister. My bio sister, Aaliyah, is getting married soon. Our oldest stepsister, Hannah, hadn't met Aaliyah's fiance until this recent incident as she lives in Dubai and we live in London. Aaliyah's future in-laws hosted an engagement party for them, which Hannah came here for. Aaliyah introduced her fiance to Hannah, but then had to leave as her fiance wanted to introduce her to the other guests. After she left, Hannah kept asking us if that was really Aaliyah's fiance. My other stepsister kept saying, I know. Hannah kept cracking jokes about how Aaliyah managed to trick him into dating her and how they didn't match as a couple. At one point, she said she would have thought he would want somebody more at his and his family's level. At first, I wasn't going to say anything to Aaliyah since I know it would just upset her and Hannah claimed to be joking, but we're all going to be bridesmaids and I know it's going to come with some nice gifts and at least one free trip, which I don't think Hannah deserves after what she said. I told Aaliyah and she was really upset and started crying. Her fiancé saw and now he doesn't want either of my stepsisters at the wedding and has uninvited them from all pre-wedding activities. This has caused a lot of drama in my family and my stepsisters and stepdad are really angry at me. My mom told me that sometimes it's best not to say anything, especially since I've made Aaliyah feel so insecure that she's trying to convince her fiancé that they should just have a small courthouse wedding. Not the a-hole. If someone said that about me and my fiancé, I'd like to know so they don't get invited to the wedding. The stepsisters sound insecure and jealous. You were just the messenger. I think it would have been much better to have challenged the stepsisters for their really nasty comments yourself. Maybe you didn't feel up to this because of previous family pecking order, and probably given their character, you would have been on the receiving end of vitriolic treatment. Really sad situation. Yes, the a-hole for bringing it up to your sister in the middle of her party, but the stepsisters are the biggest a-holes. Not the a-hole. She really did deserve to know her bridesmaids were being a-holes repeatedly behind her back. What jerks! Have your stepsisters always been mean to Aaliyah? Anyway, I do feel bad for your sister though, but like I said, she deserves to know despite it being painful. My fiancé and I bought a house this summer. Her sister and brother-in-law came over to see the house. While we were looking at the backyard, our neighbor said hello and made small talk with us. When my sister-in-law and brother-in-law were getting ready to leave, my sister-in-law agreed, but then she said how nice our neighbor was and how flattering it was that he mistook my sister-in-law for my fiancé's daughter. This is a thing my sister-in-law always does, according to my fiancé. Despite being a year older, my fiancé is 45 and her sister is 46. Her sister constantly says that everyone who meets both of them is shocked to find out that they are sisters, instead of mother and daughter. This is because my fiancé has black hair, but she doesn't color it. My sister-in-law also has black hair, but she colors it blonde and has big highlights. She has bangs and the hair around her face is shorter than the rest. My fiancé doesn't have this. She had a facelift in the past and gets those face freezing injections. She does all this to look younger. My fiancé never has. Normally I don't care what other people do. It's her money and her face, so as far as I'm concerned, go nuts. But my sister-in-law says she can't buy alcohol because the clerks think her ID is fake. People mistake her for my fiancé's daughter, or her own 25-year-old daughter's younger sister, or even that people think her husband illegally married a teenager and express concern. None of that happens. She doesn't look 25 or 30 years younger. I was there the whole time our neighbor talked to us. None of us talked to him alone, and he didn't say anything close to this. So I said our neighbor never said that. Her sister tried to argue. But I pointed out all of us were there. Then her sister said he may not have said it, but he was definitely shocked that I look 30 years younger than her. I told her she was delusional if she thought that. She got really angry. She said I'm just jealous my fiancé doesn't look as young as her. Her husband defended her too, and said he would yell except he doesn't raise his voice to women, and then they stormed out. Later, she texted my fiancé to say I'm trying to drive a wedge between them, and told me I'm rude, an a-hole a jealous nobody, etc., and need to apologize. My fiancé did tell me this has been happening for years, and she just rolls her eyes and ignores it. But I couldn't keep quiet because it happened right in front of me. My fiancé even told me her sister would probably start saying I look like her mother too after we get married. Her sister and her husband are still upset that I insulted her and want an apology I'm not prepared to give. Not the a-hole. There's something wrong with the sister in the head. You caught her out on her lies and things didn't go well afterwards. Stay away from her as much as possible. Enjoy your new home. Not the a-hole. 
She is delusional and is at the same time constantly putting your fiancé down by behaving like that, intentional or not. How do you think she would feel if the script was flipped and she was constantly hearing in a sense that she looks 25 to 30 years older than her sister, separated by a year of age? I'm sure she would be quite offended. Sometimes the truth hurts, doesn't make you an a-hole for being the bearer of bad news. Not the a-hole. She is delusional. If she lies about, part of the content of, a conversation that involved you and many others, and later tells the conversation to those same people with added parts to it, and believes that she isn't going to get called out for such blatant lie, then she is delusional. Girl, tell the story however you want to, but not to the people that were participants of it. Dummy. When I went to pick up my five-year-old son from my ex's house, he looked really upset and was sniffling. I asked him what was wrong, and he said his mom wouldn't let him pack his favorite shirt. I assumed it was probably dirty, and she didn't want to pack a dirty shirt with clean clothes. I told her to give it to me in a separate bag, like a shopping bag or something else disposable, and I'd wash it at home. X refused. She said, I bought that shirt. It stays here. First of all, we ordered it online, and my credit card paid for it. Second, it's his shirt, and it's his favorite shirt. It has his favorite character from his favorite show on it, and he likes to wear it all the time. I told her to just give me the shirt, and I'd order another one to be delivered to her house. She told me to order another one, which we all know will do nothing to make our son less upset in the moment. He started crying, so I just started walking down the hall to his room. She started screaming, What are you doing? Get out of my house! No! You don't have permission! Like an insane person. It was mortifying. Also, it isn't her house. It's still our house until it sells, as per court order. And then we're splitting the profits. Lawyers handling everything. So that's another creative interpretation. She tried to pull me back, but I just keep walking. And she isn't strong enough to cause me any difficulty. Note, she just tugged on my arm a little, and it didn't hurt at all. I open his dresser, find the shirt, take it, turn around and then head out, collecting my son and his bag on the way. She stood in her doorway sobbing, screaming, thief, thief, until we turned and I couldn't see her anymore. Son was hugging his shirt, upset by the encounter but happy to have it. When I discussed everything later with friends and family, some said I handled it perfectly and others said I was way out of line. Main points to what I did wrong. A. She is the resident of the home, so even if we are co-owners, it's gross to invade her living space like that and take something technically in her possession. B. I acted like I could do whatever I want since I'm a man and she can't stop me. C. I didn't keep trying to find a compromise, just did what I deemed necessary without her getting any say. I understand these points but think she was being unreasonable and vindictive to the detriment of our son. Was I an a-hole to her? Not the a-hole. First off, it is your son's shirt. This was just some way of exerting power over him. Maybe it's to make him want to come back. Maybe it was a way to punish him. But it's still his shirt. Second, like you said, the house belongs to both of you. And it wasn't about you being a man. It was about you being your son's father and righting a wrong committed against him. Moreover, what makes any of your friends think your ex was going to compromise? This was about her having power, not about the shirt itself. And she wasn't going to give up power. You were right to do what you did. Not the a-hole. My daughter has a huge bag of stuffed animals and her special blanket that she brings back and forth. Space and money are tied at my ex's place. Plus, my kid is sensitive enough to have a main shirt, blanket, stuffed animal, etc. So it makes sense to bring stuff back and forth rather than to have doubles. As far as I'm concerned, the shirt belongs to your kid rather than either of you. I hate that your kid has to see that. Not the a-hole. She was doing this to manipulate your child. She wanted to keep his favorite shirt at her place so that your son wouldn't like being with you. Sounds like a parental alienation tactic. I have a cousin called Alice. She has taken two gap years and has recently announced that she won't be going to university after all. Her parents asked her what she was planning to do, and she said her plan was to do what I did, but unlike me, she would be successful at it. My aunt told me this after she asked me to talk some sense into her. I told her I didn't want to get involved, but Alice brought it up herself in front of me at a family gathering. She was telling our cousins about how they were all wasting their lives studying and working when they could just snag a rich man like she had almost done and that they were wasting their best years. I tried to mind my own business, but I knew someone was going to mention me, which they did. Her sister pointed out that marrying a rich man hadn't worked out well for me 
and Alice turned around and basically said that I had failed because I was dumb and I didn't know how to keep my mouth shut and my legs open. These weren't her exact words. I've been sort of separated from my husband for almost three years, and everybody in my family knows it's a sensitive subject for me. Nobody except my immediate family talks about it. I asked her what her plan was exactly, and she told me she knew how to keep a man and she was young and pretty, so she would find a rich man easily and live life in luxury. I asked her how many rich men she knew, and she got annoyed by my question and told me it was none of my business. I asked her where she thought I met my husband and told her the rest of our cousins had a better chance of finding a rich man than her. She got angry at me and said I was just bitter because she was going to have the life I thought I would have when I baby trapped my husband and that instead of focusing on her, I should focus on all of the women my husband was probably sleeping with right at that moment. I told her she was a delusional idiot and that I hoped she woke up before she made the same mistakes I did. She called me a bitter bee and ignored me for the rest of the day. Am I the a-hole? Um, was your cousin born like a human? Or did she just spring into being when someone spilled Chemical X on an insult for him? Not the a-hole. You were rather rude, but based on the story, the insults were flying in both directions. I think your comment, delusional idiot, is probably accurate. Rich guys, and women, generally have pretty good radar to identify and avoid potential gold diggers. My 26, mom, 51, is a blogger and is kind of successful in her niche. When she started out, I edited and promoted all her videos and helped her with her journey. Now I am married and a stay-at-home mom. After she started making money, she hired her own editors and then she started her own business and hired some other employees, and she's doing good now. I was the one who chose the said employees when she started out with the business, and I still give her business advice and stuff. I've always done all this for free. Lately, I've been looking for a remote job. I'll be honest, I don't need this job, but I thought it would be nice to use this money for spending on non-essential things like shopping and vacation and gifts and stuff. I asked my mom whether she had any openings, and she said that she was looking to fire one of her editors for her poor work ethics, so I can take her place. My mom gave Elsie the news, but told her to take her time, and a few days later I dropped by to collect info about the project she was previously working on. She was clearly shocked to learn that I was the one taking her place. I should also say that my mom will be paying me more than she did Elsie. She was very cold to me, which was understandable. Soon, she started badmouthing me and my mom to other employees, and about nepotism, and how that money put a roof over her head, whereas I don't even need it or deserve it. Full disclaimer, I'm a computer science engineer with an MBA, so I am qualified for this job, and I do have experience with years of freelancing and working for my mom for free. Elsie threw a tantrum in the office and recorded it and made a video calling us bees on exposing the real XXXX and how I stole her job. Elsie also leaked some information about a new brand that my mom was launching this December. It was done in a candid manner, but still, information went out without our permission. I want to press charges, but would that make us double the a-hole? My mom just wants the video taken down and she has agreed to let it go, but I'm not so sure. Everyone sucks here. You've all behaved like children and dreadfully unprofessionally. How are you an adult woman with a post-grad degree who doesn't know you can't press charges on a civil matter? 1. Your mother was insanely unprofessional in how she treated her employee. 2. You were unprofessional in how you treated her employee. 3. Elsie was unprofessional in her video, but honestly, kind of feel for the girl. Honestly, I don't buy that Elsie's performance was unsatisfactory or that your mother was going to fire her. And frankly, I doubt a magistrate would buy it either. What is wrong with you people? If Elsie posted here, she would unanimously, unequivocally be deemed the a-hole. She leaked company information because she was upset? And that's a reasonable response to being let go? Nepotism or not, her behavior was completely inappropriate and unacceptable. Expose video, fine. OP is out her damn head for pushing the issue but you're delusional if you think Elsie is in the right. I don't really get how people are claiming nepotism here when, one, the daughter is, as it seems, a qualified candidate, and the ex-employee was already set to be fired, and two, the daughter apparently helped quite significantly with the initial building of the business. This isn't just arbitrarily hiring a family member. It's bringing back what sounds to be essentially a co-founder. If the employee's firing was unwarranted, stated clearly it was not, it would be one thing. As it is explained, though, not the a-hole. 
The idea that the mother should have handled it better is silly too. She's obligated to explain to the ex-employee why she was fired at most, depending on state, but she has no obligation to explain her replacement plans to them. That's an absurd concept. Edit 1. I didn't steal her job. Elsie would have been fired with or without me in the picture. Elsie wasn't a good employee to start with. I understand that it was poorly handled, but stop plastering nepotism over it when I'm perfectly qualified with experience and proven results. I can find another job easily. I just chose not to because I want to work with my mom. I'm getting paid more because of my qualifications and experience, and not because I'm her daughter. Edit 2. I never disclosed my salary to Elsie. I only gave full disclosure here because I wanted to be honest about what really went down. I am getting paid more because I have more qualifications and experience than her. I've been working for my mom since I was 18 or 19. I have two sisters. I really doubt my mom would ever hire them just because they are her daughters. I was only hired because she knew I can do the job. I would also like to make clear that I wasn't born with a silver spoon. Me and my mom put in constant hard work in building everything we have right now, and it didn't happen overnight. So your claims that I run to my mom for money is invalid. I 100% choose to work for her. I talked to a lawyer regarding this, not for suing her, but for general advice. Technically, we can sue her given that she leaked confidential information, in addition to feeding lies to the public about how the situation went down. She did sign an NDA. The brand my mom is about to launch is with collaboration with another big name, so what Elsie did not only affects my mom, but also a third party. I don't want to sue Elsie because she called me a B, but because of her behavior and the information she leaked. Some people here have made me realize that it would be an over-the-top reaction. I am not going to proceed with it, but I can't talk for the other brand involved in this. We do have documentation of Elsie's poor performance, and my mom did warn her multiple times. In fact, upon further inquiry, I learned that my mom gave a deadline to Elsie to complete the work or find a new job, and Elsie was fully aware of this. All the other employees are proof of Elsie's long-term unprofessional behavior. My mom just wanted to let Elsie go slowly because of the virus, but, well, her compassion backfired. We learned that business shouldn't be mixed with personal feelings. Starting from now, everything will be dealt with by HR, whom we will be hiring soon.